so I'm currently at UTMB. It's in Galveston. Um, I kind of got involved. I've always been interested in medicine, that whole story. Uh, my dad is a dentist, so he kind of, I guess, opened the door for me in terms of that. And then I was previously like pre-nursing and got into school Ended up like applying, but just didn't feel right about it. My dad was like, you know, maybe you should do something else. Like just look into PA. And I was like, what's PA, you know? So I um, ended up looking more into it and then um, applied. And once I got out of school and everything and applied and the first time I applied, I didn't get in and it felt like kind of rushed in hindsight, but I guess I was just kind of like speeding through things, kind of felt like I could have. <laughs> I took my little kind of gap year, I guess, um, worked and worked as like an EMT, worked in, as a scribe in a pediatric ER, and then reapplied and got in. So here I am now. But I guess right now, I mean, I graduate in August, and I'm most interested in ER okay. at this time. So I really liked germ when I did germ, and then I really liked ER, but I think for kind of the same reason. So I really like procedural things, so like the biopsies and suturing and getting to do a little bit of that with derm. and like the cosmetic side of derm is always cool. It's just different. Mm -hmm. And then with ER, obviously the procedures, but I think, um, just the fast paced kind of shift work while I'm young kind of thing. I think I'll probably end up doing ER first. Yeah. That's one downside to derm is that, um, I don't know of any that aren't like this, but we're clinic based. Yeah. And so, yeah. I have a schedule and I see patients and um, my patients schedule six months a year, three months out. And so I have to schedule my vacations and my time off about that a year out. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. um, that kind of stinks. I don't have something like ER or urgent care or um, working in a hospital where I could switch shifts with someone or yeah. take off if I need to. And um so I would say that is kind of a downside yeah. to something where you have a set schedule because you are kind of, I mean, even this week, my baby was sick and at one yeah. point in the middle of the night when I'm up with her, my husband was like, oh, maybe you should take off tomorrow. And I was like, I, no. I, I can't. I'm like, are you going to see those 30 patients? <laughs> like, you want me to call them right now? And yeah, so... Yeah, that's but, like real life. Yeah. Yeah. So that's just something that, I mean, I don't think I really thought about that. Mm -hmm. I don't think it would have changed anything either. But um, for people who are looking at what they want to do, if you're looking for more flexibility with your schedule a little bit, I think. Yeah. It's definitely something to think about. Mm -hmm. And, and like, like, I yeah. guess the other thing, so it's just, it's like the grass is always greener yeah. because like the hospital doesn't close. So yeah. <laughs> you may have to work Christmas. You may yeah. have to work New Year's. You right. may have to work, you know, Thanksgiving. Yeah. Which or Saturdays, you know, and that kind of in, in different shifts. Your your hours yeah. may not be the normal. I mean I'm I'm home mostly by five every single day. Every day. So, yeah. Um, I mean that's nice and I like that. I know. Yeah. I did not, I liked my time in the ER, but I will tell you after three days or four days of 12 hours straight, I was, I was done. I mean, you're over it. Yeah. Like all you do is go to work, work, come home. Yeah. Something, sleep. Sleep. Yeah. Like get up, do it again. Like there is yeah. no time for anything else while you're on. And I mean, when you're off, it's nice, but yeah. Oh, bro. Yeah. I definitely think it's like a personality thing. I was and not I the best think... version of me during that month. I can say that. Intrip work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just like feel like maybe it's because that's the only thing I've done 
So in college, like working at the, I worked at the university hospital and then after like scribing, which was ER and then EMT, like the only work I've done has been shift work. So maybe I'm just like more comfortable or I don't know, more used to it or whatever, but yeah. I don't know. It's definitely appealing for sure. And And I think younger, like, you know, fresh out, like, I think this would be the time to do it as opposed to, you know, 10 years from now, if I'm like trying to have children or something like that. Yeah, and you can, I mean, you can pick up shifts usually and do a little bit of extra if you want to, whereas I can't really do that. I could go, I guess, get a second job, but. um, Right. No, like saving up for something or. Mm Mm-hmm. Paying off loans. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, it's, it's great. I, I definitely, I, I liked the ER. The only rotation I didn't like was psych. And I think it was just the rotation I had because um, I was inpatient for four weeks and that was yeah. a lot. So um, yeah. I have, some of my classmates had great experiences, but just mine was, was a lot of really hard stuff. So. Yeah, like emotionally kind of hard too. Yeah, yeah. It just, it was, it was a lot, but I loved everything else. I mean, I love OBGYN, surgery, endocrine. Really? Talking about. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I just, um, pretty much everything. Peds, I got really sick, but I didn't yeah. it. I still have peds and OBGYN. Okay. And I also have cardio, which. I did that one for like the same reason. I f- I feel like I've gotten more comfortable over rotations just with the content of cardiology, but I feel like I could be better and I felt like it would be good for like boards, you oh, know. Yeah, that's such a huge part. I wish I wish I did a rotation in cardiology. Yeah. For the sole purpose of knowing that I'm in derm now. You know, while you're on rotations, that's your only chance. If you know you're going to work in a different area, some people are like, oh, I know I want to do derm. Should I do my electives in derm? Well, yes, because it's nice to get that experience. But at the same time, it is your only chance to explore those other fields. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to kind of get more of that foundation in cardiology or a different area, like I think it's wise to do a rotation in it. um, Right. Which – Again, hindsight's twenty twenty, but at the time I was like, "No way, I don't like no. cardio. I'm not doing that." Um, when really, it would have been extremely beneficial, right? Me, but. Just like a little bit of a foundation. Like I feel like it. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we can't master everything in four to six Definitely. to eight weeks or whatever. But um, just that exposure and like having someone, you know, their whole job is to like teach you. You know. Yes. Yeah, so that's, that's my next one. We'll see. Awesome. Well, no, be fun. I mean, it, uh, do you feel like PA school has flown by? Yeah. <laughs> it's, I like when I went back on my blog, cause you were asking about like stats and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I was like, shoot, I, I actually just don't know those numbers anymore. But I like looked back and it was started in 2016 And I'm like, okay, that was literally right. That was right after I got my acceptance. I got my acceptance in October Mm -hmm. and I started the um, blog and I'm like, that feels so, it feels so far away, but then it also feels like so close. Like how am I at the end of this journey? You know what I mean? It's, it's insane to me. (laughs) Yeah. And I wish I could say once you start working, it slows down. But it yeah. literally just goes faster. Really? It's crazy. You yeah. just like, you get in a groove and then it's yeah. like, you know, it's just like yes. fine. Yes, exactly. So. And then I'm sure kids too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can't believe my baby's eight months old. She's a little <gasps> teeny baby. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I know. It's seriously flown. So, and especially having like documented stuff like with blogging and everything, yeah. it's like, what like oh, even God. just like old Instagram posts and stuff I'm like what like this like why was I doing that? <laughs> even in just like two years like things have changed oh they change like daily so, um, on those things but anyway wait where did you go to undergrad 
I went to undergrad at University of Missouri. Oh. Super random. Yeah. Are you so from, I'm from Texas? I'm from Dallas. Yes. Okay. So from Dallas, went to private school pretty much my whole life. And then um, towards the end, I, t- I think I was just kind of getting like, what what would I call it? Like, kind of like the travel bug or like just kind of, I felt like I needed to go somewhere, which doesn't make a lot of sense. But I always had wanted to go out of state and also somewhere a little bit more cold than Texas is. So I looked at like the neighboring states like OU. I looked at OU. I looked at like LSU. I looked at Arkansas, but a a ton of people like from this area go to Arkansas. So I kind of didn't want to do that. And then ended up looking at University of Missouri. One of my friends from high school also was looking at it. So it felt kind of comfortable because I I was like, have me. You know what I mean? That I'm familiar with. And then no one else will be there. And I can kind of like start, I guess, fresh or whatever. So, yeah, that's what happened. And then met my husband there and all of that. So it was a good time. That's awesome. What was your major? My major was Bachelor of Science in Health Sciences. Okay. So at first, we like had to declare pre-nursing. So I did, I declared pre-nursing, took quite a few, we had, it was like pre-nursing classes. And then once I switched over, I just switched over to like science of health sciences and kind of got like the organic chemistry that I was missing and uh, pharmacology, like a couple other, like all of those kind of higher level things that we needed. Okay. Um, when you were going through your application cycles, both the first time mm-hmm. and the second time when you were accepted, how many schools did you apply to and kind of walk mm-hmm. us through what those outcomes were that first cycle and then compared to the second cycle? Yes. So first cycle, I applied to at least, I would say 10 to 12 schools. Um, I applied pretty much everywhere in terms of like around the country. I applied to Texas schools, um, mainly Texas schools, because Texas has a lot of schools, and then I would get to get the chance to be at, in Texas and have in-state. And then I also applied to some California schools. I applied to Michigan schools, because that's where my husband was. Um, that's where he's from. And then I think I may have applied to, like, Florida. I just was going everywhere. I was, like, casting a a wide net. So I I think I just wasn't – one, I don't think I was as confident in my application. I felt rushed, too. And then three, I didn't have as much knowledge about – the application process. So I knew that some schools were rolling and some schools were kind of like a hard deadline kind of thing, but I guess I didn't truly appreciate how early you kind of needed to place your application in for those rolling schools. So I think I applied pretty late. Like I applied like August, September, mainly towards their hard deadlines and not Like, I did not apply early at all for any of them. So I didn't, I started getting rejection letters, which I was kind of like, I'm just going to try it. And if it works out, it works out. If it doesn't, I'll reapply. Um, Applied, got rejection letters. I was getting a little bit discouraged. Then I think around December, OU, like University of Oklahoma, um, sent me an interview invite and I went up there in early January and I had the interview and it was just like very average. Like it, it seemed, I just wasn't super confident. I was really, really nervous and it was like a two on one interview. So that's a little bit different sometimes too. Uh, when it's like two people asking you questions instead of one person. So it was just kind of, like, eh, 
you know, like it wasn't super impressive. And I knew that coming out. So I just was like, you know, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And um, they, I think they just ended up rejecting me. And so I went into that next year. So that was like January, February. Um, Went into that next couple of months re-preparing my application. And I think one of the biggest things that changed my application from the first time to the second time was I talked to this lady. It was like a family friend that she worked uh, for a PA program as like a clinical, some sort of director or something like that. And I just asked, I was like, Hey, like, I know you through, you know, a family friend. I'm like, if you have a chance, like, can you go over my application with, with me? and see what I can improve on. She was like, yeah, sure. Just like come up to my office. So I went up, I went up there and she was like, yeah, like you haven't really standing out in what you've really done. And like, you should do this to your personal statement and maybe you should continue volunteering and blah, blah, blah. She just kind of gave me some, some pointers, which I thought was really, really helpful. Cause I kind of was like, where do I go from here? So at that point, I ended up volunteering for this like after school kind of program. And it was actually like one of the top areas of children of refugees in Dallas, which was kind of interesting. Um, So I ended up volunteering there and loved it actually. So I just did that like once a week. I, uh, started working as an EMT. Then after that, I, what else did I do? I shadowed more, which once you get shot, once you start shadowing, you can like, people just have other people. Oh yeah. You could shadow my friend, that kind of thing. So that was, once that's on a roll, it was pretty easy. Um, after that, I retook my GRE Ended up scoring one point higher, but I was like, whatever. (laughs) I I did what I could. And then uh, what else? Then after that, I just edited my personal statement again. And I really kind of just tried to focus on on like selling myself and really explaining why I want to be a PA and why I wanted to be in the medical field. So I think my biggest piece of advice for those that are second time applicants, which like there's a ton out there first, like you just can't feel down on yourself. You can't feel ashamed. Even if you see other people getting in the first time around. Um, I just think the biggest thing is to find every single weakness that you can on your application and somehow improve it. Like that means taking the GRE again and getting a point higher than last time, then you know, you, you made the effort to improve it. And I'm, I'm sure people will look at that, especially if they see that you're a second time applicant. So I guess that's my biggest piece of advice. And, um, the second time I applied, applied to about the same amount of schools, um, applied very early. (laughs) I applied in like May, it opens in April. So I applied in like May, um, sent in, sent in all that stuff. Um, and then heard back pretty soon, heard back maybe like September, October ish for, I had four interviews in total and I got accepted at all four of those interviews, at all four of those schools. So all the improvements paid off. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then like, once you. I think once you have failed and like you put in the work to really try to like improve your application and improve yourself and all of that, I think your confidence will just kind of automatically boost itself knowing that you've done like you've done the work, you know, you've done what you can. Oh, I also took, um, retook a class and that I like organic chemistry, like everyone else. (laughs) <laughs> I got a, a C in and I retook it and got like a B minus or something. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But I think if they see that effort, I think that's probably a big factor for them if they see second time applicants. So those interviews, like, it was just night and day difference. Like I wasn't, I mean, I was always, you know, you're always going to be a little bit nervous because you want to get in, but I was much more confident and like I could speak to my resume and like the work that I put in and all of that kind of thing. So that's my whole journey. Gosh. Okay. So <laughs> at that point you're ex- in, accepted to four programs. Yeah. Yeah. So the programs I was accepted at, I was accepted at OU, which is funny. Um, OU, Barry University, um, Texas Tech, and UTMB. So at that point, I was like, well, OU, OU has a pretty expensive program, especially for out of state students. So I kind of was like, okay, well, I, I guess I would rather stay in state and the same kind of thing with berries. Um, so the UT medical branch and it kind of came down to like family. Um, I have a ton of family in Houston and Houston is like 45 minutes away from Galveston, which is where the school is. So Um, I I knew rotations would be in the Houston area and knowing that I would have like a place to stay or if there was a hurricane, I could come up to, you know what I mean? Like just an option for living in Houston and knowing that I could visit family was better for me than Texas Tech because Texas Tech is in like West Texas and it's just in the middle of nowhere. (laughs) Those are good. Those are good factors. Location and cost are mine too. So. Yes, um, and I think UTMB at least it used to hold this title. I'm not sure what it is at this moment, but it used to be the cheapest uh, PA program. Really? Okay. So it is, it's like significantly cheaper than <laughs> any other school. Cool. I don't know why, like but that. it's um, nice. Okay, can we talk about Texas schools for a minute? Yeah. Um, how many of your classmates are Texas residents? And how many classmates do you have? I have 89 okay. classmates. Um, it's also one of the biggest, I guess, oh, programs you. or class sizes. Um, probably, I would say at least 75 are from Texas. <laughs> Okay, so this is, I just want people to hear this because when I'm working with people with like pre-K assessments or emails or whatever, um, Mm -hmm. a lot of people want to apply to Texas schools, Yeah, but they have no connection to Texas whatsoever. And from what I have seen, Texas schools love Texas residents. And that's kind of across the board for all the public schools. Private ones are a little different, but um, I just wanted to know if your firsthand experience that was true or not so yeah I definitely think it is I don't know if anyone necessarily says that outright like on their website or anything but I I think all public Texas schools even like undergrad I think they all preference Texas students well I went to an in-state school in Georgia that was a Uh public school and they they had to accept 90% Georgia residents to get their Oh, wow. And so I don't know if it's the same in Texas or not. But, yeah, out of 44 of us, I think there were literally four or five that were out of state. So Really? Huh. Yeah. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. I don't know if there's a quota that they have to reach, but yeah. I think they preference it. Okay. Well, for sure. glad to hear you say that. So <laughs> everyone else can hear you. <laughs> yes. But I do have – I do have, there's one New Yorker, there's two people from Oregon, um, which is kind of interesting. Um, I think there's one from California, but like, that's really all that stands out to me. Well, I mean, it's not to say it's not going to happen, but I think if you're going to, I think you should have maybe some type of connection to Texas Mm -hmm. um, or just an extremely impressive application 
Um, yeah. If you're yeah. not one of those very few out of state that make it in. So, yeah, yeah, I agree. Anyway, so. <laughs> it's funny. I okay. Used to think. Um, okay, so for you transitioning from undergrad to PA school so far and yeah. kind of towards the end, what yeah. has been the most difficult part for you? Um, the most difficult part from undergrad to PA school, I would say definitely the time commitment. So the commitment is just completely different. And I feel like I've heard that pretty much across the board from like my friend group in, in PA school. Um, when we like, we were studying all day and like you hear people say that all the time but when you really think about like getting up getting up studying before class having breakfast going to class sitting in class <laughs> until 3 4 p.m going to the anatomy lab for two hours eating dinner until 11 p.m. and then going home and like going to bed okay. it gets obviously I'm blessed and I'm thankful and all of that but it is a lot and a lot of people kind of I wouldn't I won't say they underestimate it but it shocks a lot of people and like I won't like there's people that have like anxiety attacks and things like that, like that are actually like very serious in terms of that transition. And I think just from undergrad, <clears throat> a lot of people, especially I feel like in medicine, a lot of people in like the general population were just really smart, kind of naturally got things didn't have to really study as much, may have done kind of poor in some classes, but overall, like, undergrad is pretty, like, steady. And then you kind of get into these professional programs, like PA school, like med school, et cetera, and then it kind of is like, ooh, like, now I actually have to, quote unquote, try. Mm -hmm sort of thing but I think that's the biggest thing and then I think the second biggest thing would just be missing out on family functions missing out going home missing birthdays engagement parties missing you know that kind of thing mm -hmm. like you don't get to talk to your loved ones as nearly as much or see them or make time so I think that's the the other big transition where you you kind of have to be content with being like placing your life on hold for a second yeah. for about a year really yeah, that's true. <laughs> and then kind of apologizing and getting back to hanging out with friends and you know clinical year is a little bit better for sure but I think those are the two biggest Okay, so you mentioned um, your husband mm -hmm. and on Instagram. You posted a ridiculously gorgeous <laughs> wedding picture. I'm um, so excited to yeah. finally put photos out. I never, I, I like took that break and I needed it because I was like stressed. Like, like I said, I was. I don't know how y'all post on social media during PA school. There's no yeah. way. Yeah. I I felt walk. the same way. I didn't have the time nor mm -hmm. the energy. Like I didn't want to be like there was not a time that I was like, let me just do my hair. Like there was never yeah. a time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah. So I finally got to post one. So, so when I'm did excited. You get married? Was that during the when? undergrad or before PA school or during PA school? Yeah. Yeah. So that was right in the middle of um PA school so it was at the very end of didactic year and right before my clinical year so okay. our school works so we have um I think we have 12 years of didactic 12 we have months. it's 12 years. <laughs> feels like 12 months 12 months of didactic we have one week off which is like our break or whatever. And then we have clinical year. Okay. So 
we got engaged in September, middle of September. You'd already started PA school? Already started PA school, started PA school in July, was trucking along um, in the middle of the first, or I guess the first full semester. We had summer semester, but the first full semester of fall. And um, got engaged, complete surprise. We had talked about it, but it wasn't like, it wasn't ever set in stone or anything like that. And we had also talked about like, oh, like if we were to get engaged, like would we do it while I was in school or would we wait? You know, we would have to wait until 2019 if we waited until the end kind of thing. But got engaged, talked about it, and we just decided on that one week um, in the middle, in the middle of didactic and clinical and the way that it worked. So we planned and planned and it was, it was honestly okay, but I had a wedding planner. My mom was a really big support and she had gone through my older sister's wedding. So, you know, she was more, she knew what was going on. Um, Just like that, and that's where we got a lot of thing, big things done. And um, so, the way it worked, we had um, final exams, and then I think we had some sort of like clinical, practical sort of thing right before clinical year. And then um, that Friday, I drove from Galveston to Dallas, which is five hours. And it was like 3 p.m. or something. So I got home pretty late. Got home around like 8. Um, Evan, which is my husband, his family had come down from Michigan. We like met up at at his apartment at that time. And um, just like hung out. Every I got to see everyone. And then went home and got ready for the rehearsal dinner the next day. Or the rehearsal and rehearsal dinner the next day. Ended up doing that, and then next day was the wedding, <laughs> and um, that was on Sunday, and then that Monday morning, we went to Mexico for our honeymoon, and went till, like, Saturday, and came back, and then it was, <laughs> I went right back down to Galveston <laughs> to start my clinicals, so it was, it was definitely a whirlwind, but I don't think I would change it, and now like being married and being more settled in um and me finishing up soon it kind of it just feels right and I'm happy I did it that way instead of waiting I think because now thinking about now it just sounds so much more exhausting obviously because you're like you've been through it but I don't think like I wouldn't change it so I would say you're crazy but I did the exact same thing (laughs) Yeah. Um, which my program thought I was crazy. I don't know if yours was really? supportive of this or not, or if they even cared, but, um, my program, they had a lot of, we have a lot of girls in general, but we have 89, like we have yeah. 89 people and they had, they had been through it. Okay. So they were like, they're kind of like side eyeing me, but <laughs> they had seen it before. Yeah. And so yeah, we did the same thing except for I knew we we kind of knew we were getting engaged, and so I kind of gave a little like, you yeah. you should really ask me before I start PA school. Um, <laughs> and so we got engaged like a month before I started, which was nice because I had that month and I I nailed down all the big stuff like yeah venue and photographer and dress and everything. Um, yeah, I was like, we gotta get all this done. And so then like my mom helped a ton. I was living at home that first year. So she was, like, oh, cool. she would just like, I'd be studying and she would come and she'd be like, do you like this better or this? And I'm like, I don't care. Pick one. Yeah. I don't care. Pick <laughs> one. I'm studying. Um, <gasps> which I could have probably been nicer, but, um, <laughs> she helped, she helped me a lot. So, yeah. um, yeah. And then once it got closer, I got a little more involved in the, the excited. Planning. Yeah. And so we, um, kind of did the same thing with, it was like before our last semester. So that last summer semester of didactic, we did uh-huh. a full year of didactic. Yeah. Yeah. And so like right in between the summer, 
um, we had a week and, um, and my husband was in medical school. So oh. we had a test that Friday, I had a test that Friday. We went straight to rehearsal dinner and then, um, got home on Saturday. And in the meantime, our schools like merged and changed the schedule. So I was actually supposed to come back the next week, but I already booked my flights and no. everything. So yeah, it was crazy. I, yeah. It was <laughs> Yeah. At the time, like I remember the day that I found out the schedule changed, my friend was sitting next to me, Danielle, and uh-huh. she was like, Serena, did you see this email? And I was like, Fu-, like I think fumes were like literally coming out of my ears. I yeah. Like, I called them a year ago and they told me yeah. okay. Like, um and it all worked out. They were very they were like, you know, Understanding. Like, yes, you covered your bases, this, you could not control this. It was out of your Right. Bases. But like you so they almost Yeah. My school almost did the same thing. We were merging. We were originally with the School of Health Professions, like SHP or whatever. And then we merged with underneath the School of Medicine in the middle of the year. Why? And <laughs> why? So I had talked to, I mean, I talked to the people I needed to talk to after we got engaged. And they're like, yeah, this is the day. Like, this is, if you're going to do it, like, this shit triple, triple checking and uh ooh, I don't know how close we were to it it was sometime in the spring and they were like hey like you know new schedule uh it's gonna be it was some sort of like meeting with the um with the faculty and the students and they're like yeah so uh instead of having this week off you're gonna have like the week after off or the week before off or something was one week off and everyone like looks at me like, <laughs> like, like, no. And I'm like, I remember feel the same way. I like got hot. Yeah. I'm like, this is not happening. I was like, well, I'm just not gonna be there. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. And that's that's how I was too. Like, sorry guys. I mean, I don't know. I did my due diligence. Yeah. And then um, they ended up switching it back, thankfully, okay. but. Yeah. <laughs> Unnecessary stress. I know. What year was your husband in at that point? A first year. His first year. Yeah. So then it was nice that, I mean, like you said, like once we were married and I started rotations, um, yeah. we got to see each other more because when he's studying for med school and I'm studying for PA school, I mean, we, we didn't see each other. We, I yeah. mean, we would meet up once or twice a week for lunch or to study. I mean, it yeah. we weren't just hanging out all the time. Um, and so I think it was nice that we were already engaged and we like had the wedding to look forward to um, mm-hmm. because it wasn't like we were, I, I mean, we'd been together for, I don't know, four years at that point. Yeah. And so yeah. It wasn't like we were still trying to like grow date this relationship. Or date. Yeah. yeah. And so, <laughs> Um, I think that would have been a lot harder. And it was nice that we both, we understood what the other person was going through a little bit. Um, whereas it, that may be more difficult with someone who is a non-medical yeah. partner or spouse or anything. So, um, cause they may not understand like how, like you said, you're studying literally 24 seven and yeah. um, um, that was nice. And then, yeah, being on rotations wasn't quite as bad and we got to see each other more and, right. Um, so yeah, so I'm, I don't regret it. And, and what came down to for me was, um, I mean, while schooling and becoming a PA was important to me, I think my life and my marriage was more important. And so I wasn't willing to wait two years. Put stuff on the back burner. Yeah, that just wasn't something I was willing to wait on. So. Yeah, um, I agree. Yeah. I agree. We just did it. Yeah. Just did it. Yeah, made it happen. <laughs> so it's possible, guys. I know. Um, yeah, it's possible. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I think with like a good support system, it can happen. Yeah. But, sure. I mean, relationships do end during PA school. Um, yeah. They do. And, and that's possible too. It's not necessarily the easiest thing. And um, yeah, it's really stressful. Yeah, it's stressful. And you have to kind of have the right expectations. But I agree. Um, all right, so we already talked about you kind of maybe wanted to do ER, but at yeah. this point, I mean, looking back, what I ask everybody this, what advice would you give to other 
to pre-PAs who are like, I'm not sure if I want to do PA. I'm kind of on the fence. What would your uh -huh. Well, <clears throat> I think one of the biggest things that sold me on like PA versus RN versus MD kind of thing was shadowing them. So like, I can't place enough importance on like getting out there, connecting with people and some, there's always, there's always going to be a connection through someone. Um, and just really seeing what these people do on a daily basis and asking the questions like, like work-life balance if that's important to you or if it's more important for you to know all the details about medicine really be the authoritative kind of provider or is it are you someone that would rather just take orders and really be bedside and get to speak with patients and kind of do that kind of thing but I think I didn't really know what people did until I shadowed them. And I truly can say that like at first I shadowed nursing and I, I liked it. I think, um, I, at first for me, it was like nursing versus MD. So I shadowed a nurse. I don't end with, the, and maybe it, it could have just been the specialty that I decided to shadow in or whatever the case is. It, I, everyone's different um, and everyone can make their own kind of sacrifices in life, whether that means like I'm going to work more, I'm going to work less. But um, she, <clears throat> the doctor I shadowed, she was in ob -GYN and she worked her clinic and then she would be done around five after seeing a million people and then she would hop back and forth to the hospital that she was at checking on people making sure you know labor or whatever um then it would be from 5 p.m to 10 p.m she's laboring with someone like waiting for them to give birth and then while that's happening someone is planning on having a c-section at 2 a.m and like it to me i was just like while this is cool, like how, like how's this going to work with life? Like I want to have more of a, a life outside of school and outside of work. And I want to, you know, I don't know. I, I can't, I can't make it sound like you can't like be a doctor and like not have a family. Cause that's definitely not the case, but I wanted to, Play, I wanted to have a more level or equal kind of playing field. Um, so that kind of, I guess, deterred me at first from MD. And then with RN, I, I kind of felt like a, I, I wanted a little bit more. So when I finally shouted a PA, I just felt kind of at peace with the amount of work that they do or we do the amount of knowledge that we have um the fact that we can change um specialties like we're trained as generalists and that we're able to change around if we want to and that was another big thing for me just knowing that I have multiple interests like really truly focusing in on one specialty for the rest of my life no matter what the scheduling is like you know that kind of gave me a little bit of fear as well. Um, but I think the biggest thing is to reach out shadow and really research like what the entire package is, not just what people are getting paid, not just the amount of schooling or, you know, that kind of thing. You got to really dig deep and see what people are doing on a day to day basis. Cause I mean, that's like the rest of your life. <laughs> so <laughs> i would definitely say shadowing yeah i i agree with you um all right now where can everyone find you you can find me at uh, megan in medicine and it's m-e-g-h-a-n in medicine um on instagram and then i have my blog at the same um address it's just megan in and that's it all of that.